Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to come out on a rainy afternoon. Uh, but I guess you know, cloudy weather is the best kind for cloud native talks. My, my name is Ram. I work as the chief evangelist at uh, the Cloud Foundry Foundation. I also help out on a couple of other uh, Linux Foundation projects. Uh, but today, I'm going to be talking about uh, some of the stuff that I've had to uh, deal with when talking about platforms, and especially in the cloud native uh, context. Now, a big part of my job involves speaking to developers, much like yourselves. And a big part of those conversations are questions, and uh, questions that sometimes I might not have answers to. Because um, as you'll see when the talk progresses, uh, this can't be much of a lightning talk if I get into solutions to these problems. But the idea is we focus on some of these questions. And um, I thought I'll just compile a few of the conversations I've, uh, I've had with various folks uh, over time. Now, the success of this tiny little project known as Kubernetes and uh, the cloud native projects that are associated with Kubernetes has resulted in a rather massive ecosystem. So there's ways in which to build applications, and not just one or two or four or eight, but like about a dozen ways in which you can build. And then you can add another two dozen ways in which to deploy applications, and then 14 ways in which you can do observability, and five ways in which you can secure your application. And so this massive ecosystem has developed, uh, which we love to call the cloud native landscape. And this landscape is not showing any signs of slowing down. And so that brings me to the first question, which is developers always ask me, hey, Ram, what is the starting point for getting into cloud native? Or what is the starting point for starting to use Kubernetes? And that, I think, is the is a, is a very core problem that the community is grappling with. I mean, growing is great, but you know, growing at a pace in which uh, the projects remain consumable and sort of sustainable is a challenge. And it's a nice challenge to have, I'll admit. But it definitely is a problem. And then the next question, as a consequence that always raises, is what parts of this massive landscape that I've chosen and built a stack out of do I explore and expose to my developers? So developers being shown a lot of the underlying parts of the stack might not necessarily be a good thing. Uh, because let's face it, most of the problems that we have are because developers are seeing a lot of things that they're technically not supposed to see. And so w the, the question is, how do you design an abstraction where you decide what you will allow your developers to see versus what you will allow your developers not to see? And then you know, there's this problem. There used to be a problem of it works on my machine. And then you know, that sort of went away. But now it's manifested in the form of it works on my cluster. Does it work on yours? Um, so this whole notion of local clusters and smaller clusters that sort of help bridge the gap is available. But it really doesn't cut it. And there's, whole, there's a lot of questions about how best do I design my local and how do I do parity with like production and things like that. Uh, and speaking of production, there's two very old problems that continue to remain problems today. Um, the first of which is you know, apps that take away too many resources and cause trouble to other apps. And you basically handle them with like pod affinity rules and things like that. But there's also you know, ways in which they can they threaten to weaken the entire system. And um, you need to work on policy, on other things to mitigate these problems. And the final question that I keep getting about Kubernetes in production is multi-tenancy. And there's no one way to solve this. Do you give everybody a cluster? Do you give everybody a namespace? Do you just give everybody a pod and ask them to roll with it? And so there's, there's so many different tools that have you know, come up with different solutions. And the last things I wanted to leave you with is this is one of the projects that I contribute to that solves some of these problems. So if you're interested in these class of problems, I highly recommend uh, you know, 
engaging with the community. But overarchingly, uh, the Kubernetes community is gathered in the form of tag app delivery with a few working groups within it that decide how to build, how to deploy, how to distribute and maintain applications. So if you're really interested in solving these problems, these, not just these five, but in allied problems about how applications sh are best packaged for Kubernetes and things like that, I highly recommend joining the community at uh, Tag App Delivery. That's my talk today. Thank you so much for being here. I have a very special relationship with Hong Kong from past lives. I, I have very nice memories of the city, and it's wonderful to be here and uh, give a talk today. Thank you so much.